Tomorrow, House Republicans face a big new hurdle right on the heels of their bruising fight over the speakership. They now have to vote on the rules package that will set the parameters for how this Congress will function over the next two years. If the chaos of last week's 15 round fiasco is any indication, Monday's vote won't be a cakewalk either. We'll have to see, though. Joining us now with more is CNN senior political commentator Scott Jennings. Hi, Scott. You watched this play out. Mm -hmm. It was the longest most combative speakers battle in more than 160 years. But Steve Scalise, the new uh, majority leader, is one of many Republicans now putting an optimistic spin on it. Let's listen. At some point in time, there was going to have to be a confrontation about changing the way that Washington works. You know, a lot of us as conservatives have been frustrated with that. This game has got to end. And those were the discussions we've had. And I think that's healthy, by the way, that we took a few days to make sure that we can set up a Congress that can work for the American people. Scott, do you think the majority of American people view what happened over the past few days as politically healthy? Oh, I think some of the conservatives do, certainly. Uh, I, I'm sure Democrats think it's a sign of dysfunction. And I think a lot of Americans in the middle uh, were probably watching it all with some amount of amusement, but are waiting to see whether the Republicans can actually address the things that they ran on, inflation, border, uh, and so on and so forth. So that, yeah. to me, that's the real question here is not the uh, not the the uh, what it took to get McCarthy into the speaker's office, but now that he has it, you know, how do the rules work? And then what's the, the floor going to look like over the next few months? Right. But I mean, you can learn a lot from watching that fight break out and, and how the hardliners might be moving forward. Right. You know, did this experience oh, no teach the hardliners to govern with their party or, or, or te did it teach them to fight until they get their way? Right. Oh, they, they certainly learned a lot about the word leverage uh, in this fight, I guess. I guess we'll find out when the rules package <clears throat> comes out what it, what it really looks like. But I think we were always in for a very closely divided Congress. There's only 222 Republicans. And then, of course, within the Republican Party, which was on full display last week, there are between 6 and 20 that at any given time are willing to uh, you know, take matters into their own hands uh, and buff leadership. And so... I do think there's going to be a lot of tumult. I mean, there are people in the Congress, for instance, who are not going to want to cut defense spending among the Republicans, and there are Republicans who are going to want to do that. That's going to be a debate, for instance. So I, I do think we sh we're in for a little bit more must-see TV on the House floor, uh, and, and we should expect that, really, for the next couple of years. Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries is offering McCarthy a spot in the political lifeboat today. Let's listen. We look forward to trying to find some reasonable Republicans who are willing to break from the extreme elements of their conference to do the business of the American people. Do you think McCarthy will try to work with moderate Democrats? Uh, no, I don't. Um, <clears throat> and I don't think he needs to at the moment. What he needs to do is try to drive as much cohesiveness among his own conference. Now, we'll see how long that lasts. There are debates to come, however. Uh, that lend one to believe that there may have to be some bipartisan work done to do the business of the American people. When the debt limit comes up in the summer, for instance, you could imagine a world where uh, that has to happen for the, for the debt limit to be raised. But in the short term, what he has to do is get everybody believing they're on the same team. That's one thing about last week that uh, troubled me was that there are a few people that I don't think necessarily believe they're on the same team as the other 200, 215 people. Uh, and that's troubling if you have folks out there who care about more, more about themselves than they do the team. So that, to me, that's Kevin McCarthy's first task, drive a team mentality among all 222. All right. So before we let you go, I have to ask you, you know, there has been a lot of criticism from Republicans of Biden not visiting the border. Now he has gone there. But does it change anything, really? D did it make any difference? This is what Republicans have been calling for. Yeah, long overdue trip, in my opinion. Uh, maybe now he'll see what the American people see on CNN and other news outlets every night, which is chaos and crisis at the border. And maybe he'll do something about it. And maybe, and just maybe, you'll see both parties decide to work together. It, you know, this is like that long vexing problem, immigration, but it, it truly is a humanitarian crisis as well as a national security crisis. Uh, and when you have a problem this big, you'd like to think that the president of one party and the Congress of another party uh, could get together and do something. So maybe that'll be the start of it. Hope springs eternal and the glass is half full. That's how I'll choose to look at it tonight. But I, I think this is a long overdue trip. All right, Scott Jennings, fellow Kentuckian. Nice to see you. Thanks so much.